I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within our gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thou good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I love thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful the noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing his praise. God has done marvelous things. And a joyful noise we're going to sing is coming from hymnal number 112. Hymnal number 112, Jesus is the light of the world. light of the world. Aren't we glad that Jesus shines his light all around us by day and by night because he is the light of the world. Our Father God, here we are. Once more and again, a few of your humble children Gather together in your name. We come into your house to worship you in spirit and in truth. We come recognizing that no matter what we go through, you still are the light of the world. Thank you, Jesus, for being such a good God. Thank you, Jesus, for being an on-time God. Thank you, Jesus, for being a loving God. 
Thank you, Jesus, for being a kind God. Thank you, Jesus, for watching over us and don't give us any more than we can bear. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to come as close as we can bear on this day, that we may sing your songs to thy hymn praises, that we may worship you, Heavenly Father, in the manner that be well pleasing within your sight. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come, Heavenly Father, thanking you, Heavenly Father, in advance for the word that shall come forth. May it convict and convert and do what you would have it to do. Oh, Heavenly Father, then I just ask you, Lord Jesus, to teach us how to pray and what things to pray for. And then, Heavenly Father, bless our coming in and our going out. We don't go out the same way that we came in. And Heavenly Father, bless us, Lord Jesus. When we go out, we may let our little light shine for you, Lord Jesus. That someone out there in a sinful world may see you through us and may ask the question, what must I I do to be saved. And Heavenly Father, let us have a word for them. Oh, Heavenly Father, just to let them know that you are God to sit high and look down low. Can't thank you enough for being a God that you are. Oh, Heavenly, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to just bless each home that is represented here on this day. Heavenly Father, bless us, bless us as a collectively as a church. Heavenly Father, and Heavenly Father, I can't thank you enough for everything that you have done, everything that you are doing, and everything that you shall do. And Heavenly Father, this is my prayer. And I thank you in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hear our prayer. Oh Lord, and incline and grant. Good morning, St. Paul. Amen. God is good. This is the reason for the season. Amen. So let's, let's smile today, y'all. He's been good. Let's, let's, let's make him feel real good about what he's done for us. Amen. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive our King. Let every art prepare him round. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven, heaven, nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reign. Let me in the song. One field and flood, rock field and play. Repeat the cause of God, repeat the calling door, repeat the calling door. No more to sin and sorrow grow, but only that's the ground. He come to make his flesh. 
blessings flow for as a crew of fear and never who will fall for ever the heaven is born he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nation prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and one of one of his Lord. Amen. 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 How's everybody doing today? All right. Happy Sunday. All right. I'm here to read the scripture verse. Amen. It's coming from Psalms chapter 30, verses 1 through 5. Psalms chapter 30, verses 1 through 5. And I'm going to read from the King James Version Bible. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called you, I called to you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the, the rim of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment. But his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing, rejoicing cometh in the morning. Joy cometh in the morning. Amen. All right, from all the dwells below the skies. Decalogue we're going to read for third Sunday of Advent Litany. So get out your programs and it's on joy. As we journey in Advent, we are reminded of the joy that awaits us. We pray that we reflect on the good news, the Savior's birth, so we may be filled with joy unspeakable and full of glory. The King is coming and we rejoice. We rejoice knowing that there is the fullness of joy in the presence of God. Fill us with joy that cannot be contained but shared with others. Let us be messengers of peace, joyfully spreading your love wherever we go. The joy we experience is not influenced by what is happening around us because joy comes from knowing Jesus. This joy, this joy that we have is a gift of God. The world did not give it, and the world cannot take it away. In your presence, O oh God, is joy and contentment. Show me, show me the path that leads to life. Psalm 16, verse 11. Anybody got a match? <laughs> All right, we got it. All right, let's read this next part in unison. We light a candle of joy today, declaring that the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
We praise and thank for the hope that Christ gives us, the peace that Christ brings us, and the joy that Christ pours into our hearts. Hear our prayers and fill our hearts with your love now and always. Amen. Glory. Good morning, God saints. Morning. Happy Sunday to you. Oh, it's a good day because God made it for you and for me. And we are told to rejoice and be glad in it. <sighs> Teaching moment. There's so many moments to teach about and so many things. But one of the things, I guess I could sum it up, hold on, hold on. I don't know about you, we all go through mess. I think that'll be the most appropriate word that I can use in church services. But if you use your imagination, you can think of another one. Amen? Amen. And that word always hits the fan. Amen? Amen. If you're following my Greek analysis. Well, knowing that, sometimes you let your guard down. Sometimes the sun shines and things are going right and you get comfortable. And when things hit the fan again, we act surprised. We go, oh my, how could this happen? But as I remembered, stuff happens. God even told me stuff will happen. So you should be prepared in season and out of season. You should not allow the things around you to affect you in your relationship with me. If you stay tight with me, I'll help you through the difficulties that will come. But like I began, sometimes we forget that the difficulties are coming because the sun is shining or because we got paid or because everything's going well. But I hear my daddy say, just keep on living. You're going to have flat tire. Car going to break down at the most inappropriate time. Stuff is going to break. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do this. And, and sometimes things happen all at once. So instead of getting frustrated, I want you to focus on me. This teaching moment is we'll be leading into the sermon, but I just wanted to give you some little overview and a little thought process in the back of your mind of thinking, what do we do? I don't know what you do, but a hymn writer had told me, and it's one of my favorite hymns, I trust in God wherever I may be upon the land or on the rolling sea, for come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over me. I used to hear Mama sing that at Warren Chapel in Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. She was a soprano virtuoso. 
she would just sing and say it. And she was one of my favorite singers along with Mahalia Jackson. And then they would go ahead and be doing stuff like that. But I never understood those words. It says, I trust in God for in the lion's den, on the battlefield or in the prison pen, through praise or blame, through flood or flame, my heavenly father watches over me. I trust in God. I know he cares for me. On mountains bleak or on stormy seas, though billows roll. See, when you're young, you don't know what a billow is. Keep living. You're going to know what a billow is. He keeps my soul. My heavenly father watches over me. The teaching is nothing but a sharing. The father watches over us. Yes, it's bad. Yes, it's going to get worse. Sometimes the sun will come out and shine, and other times it won't. People are going to go from bad to worse. Things will change. What was right yesterday might not be right today. But the assurance is our Heavenly Father watches over you and I, and we can be confident that whatever comes our way, no matter how bad the storm, I'm in his hand. God bless you. God smile upon you. Now, I'm going to sit down, but we need some church. Can we have church today? Amen. I ain't talking about this little. Amen. Amen. I ain't talking to you just sitting there just to see what happened. I'm talking about, let's have some church, please. Amen. Can we do that? Amen. Well, how we do that, Pastor? If you pray, if you ask God to come, if you seek his face, he's going to show up. And see, the joy is somebody's not going to do it today. But as long as we got two or three. Amen. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because 
because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are because of who you are I give you glory because of who you are I give you praise because of who you are I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Go but My provider, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom, Because of who you are, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give glory. Thank you, Jesus. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. worship you because of who you are. Oh, Lord, you've been so good. Yes, Lord. Nisi. Oh, yeah. Lord, you reign in victory. Over my boy, Prince of Peace, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Now. Oh, yeah, Lord, provider to hold on easy. Lord, you reign in victory. The over style, my prince of peace. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. I worship you. 
because of who you are. Oh, yeah. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are. Because of who you are, I will live for Lord, I worship you. Worship you, Lord. Because of who you are, Lord. Because of who you are. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory. Because of who you are. I done told you every now and again, it's good to just worship the Lord. I ain't got paid, I ain't got no money. It ain't going right. But I'm going to thank you. Body been acting funny. Kind of weak. But thank you. I'm going to let him move. The background scripture. In Psalm 30, I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. I think in verse 4, it got happy. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name for his anger. Last only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. The subject for this morning is a joy that lasts. A joy that lasts. Joy is the subject that we will be looking at this morning. 
I chose this subject, or God laid it on my heart, because of the uh, lectionary calendar, the season of Advent, and the third candle being that of joy. Now, as we have been living a while on this God's created planet, or you done got to an age where you've come to understand, you'll find out and reason that life ain't easy. See, there's some folk that go around trying to fool us uh, because they only express the emotion of happiness. But life is not easy. Our accomplishments may sometimes outnumber our failures. But life ain't easy. Sometimes we're up and other times we are down. Whichever you're going through, the fact remains that we will or have already gone through some weeping nights and some joyful mornings. But what we must understand is that weeping nights and joyful mornings go hand in hand. In other words, they they work together. You you, you can't have one without the other. Uh, 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 Psalmist wrote and says, joy and pain like sunshine. Oh, you heard of Frankie Beverly too. If we want to gain or attain joy in the morning, then we must realize that we must learn how to endure the pain through the night. Now, I know that doesn't sit well with modern folk, But remember, we've already established that life ain't easy. And if I'm going to shout for joy in the morning, that I must learn how to hold on while I'm weeping in the nighttime. See, see, God's joy will always bring with it happiness, but The pursuit of happiness will not always bring joy. That's why I said them folk always try to deceive us into happiness. Yes, they do. See, happiness actually is derived from the English word happenstance, which means something that happens because of a circumstance. Thus, what we think of happiness is an emotion that is caused by our circumstances. So it is nothing but a reflection or a direct cause and effect upon our emotions. Hmm. If something good happens, it makes us happy. If something bad happens, we ain't happy. See, there are a lot of things that we can do to make us happy. But if there's one thing we fail to do, we won't be satisfied. The text that we're looking at and some additional text that I will give helps us with this subject of joy. You see, in the Bible, joy and happiness is usually synonymous. They go hand in hand. God does not separate. The world, though, has changed the definition of happy. Every time you're watching TV, the ads are to make you happy. You can't be happy until you lose that weight. You can't be happy until you buy Peloton or this exercise program. You can't be happy until you eat this instead of that. You can't be happy until you look like this instead of looking like you do. If you drive our car, you'll be happy. 
If you're in your car, you're not happy. Right? So our media causes a response out of us that goes to a physical happiness of our circumstance and environment. If you, you change your environment, you will be happy. But we found that's a lie. We found that you can put you in a Manhattan penthouse with a helicopter, take you wherever you need to go, give you a Bugatti, a Ferrari, a yacht. But many of those people that have those things are not happy. Mm -hmm. If I had more money, I'd be happy. But you'll find people that have more money than you can count are still not happy. Because the circumstances can change at a flick in a moment's notice. So what I was seeking was the answer to our questions. How can I find a joy, a happiness that lasts forever? See, God's kind of joy doesn't depend on circumstances. In fact, God's joy and happiness often can exist despite our circumstances. It, it, it's independent of the environment, the people, or the occasion, or what I am going through. See, God doesn't want us to be under our circumstances or controlled by them. He wants us to be overcomers, and he wants to give us the ability to have control of our lives and not let others in those things control how we feel. He wants us to be free from the chains and the shackles that life can abode. That's why Jesus says, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The question is, how do we experience this, this God-given joy, this happiness that God wants to bless us with? You know, a lot of shows, talk shows, self-help book and magazines has steps, seven steps to joy, five steps to happiness, three steps to your best life now. Google, find how to find happiness and over 186 million results will pop up. Uh, the world's happiness is go to the bar, get drunk, meet other pe miserable people, and then that'll make you happy. Every product commercial says, buy our junk and you will be happy. But true lasting joy and happiness isn't something that you can find in the world. It is not something that you buy or put on. Paul, writing to the Philippian church, says in verse 4, Four of chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. I chose this because Philippians is the book of happy, the book of joy. In the book of Philippians, the theme is joy. Paul wrote this letter during his first Roman imprisonment around 61 AD. The abiding message of Philippians concerns the nature and grounds of Christian joy. Of how we can live a life of joy and happiness in spite of the circumstances. For Paul, true joy is not a surface emotion that depends on favorable circumstances of the moment. See, I didn't live long enough. No, the moments can change. I didn't live long enough. No, it can be 70 degrees in the morning, and by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it turns to 25 and 3 inches of snow. 
I didn't live long enough that I can be driving in Mount Juliet and it's sunshine and we got the shades on and by the time I got here, it was clouds and overcast sky. I didn't live long enough to watch it rain on one side of the street. Oh, y'all help me now. See, it can change. I don't want to live my life based on changing of the wind, changing of the direction. And I sure don't want to live my life based on the changing of folk. See, folk will smile in your face. Oh, girl, you look so good. Man, you did a good job. As soon as you turn your back. Them jokers fickle. Them jokers two-faced. All they are saying, just smile, oh, I just love it. But soon as that back, or soon as the right person comes, I, I, I wish I had some help up in here. I, I, I wish I had some help up in here. See, 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 joy is independent of our outward condition and circumstances. And it, Paul is saying it's possible through Christ to live above this. This letter reveals the timeless message that true joy is found only in a dynamic personal relationship with Jesus and an assurance that God is able to turn the adverse circumstances to our good for his glory. Somebody say amen. So, so Philippians shows us how God wants his people to express this triumphant joy to rejoice always. He said, no, I, I, I don't feel like worshiping. And I didn't ask you whether you felt like worshiping. I didn't ask you whether you felt like coming to church. I didn't ask you whether you felt like getting up. Because the truth of the matter is, don't, don't nobody feel like getting up. That bed felt good. I got that pillow right, and it was just right on. I, I don't want to get up. I don't want, sometimes, you, did you know, sometimes we don't want to go to work. I just don't want to go. Amen? I just don't want, I'm going to stay here, right here. So sometimes you don't feel like it, but I've learned you got to move past your feelings. Hmm. Now, now, the text in Psalms 30 David, David, David says, uh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy. Mm -hmm. See, David's the author. He, he had his fair share of weeping nights and joyful mornings. He went through weeping nights when Saul was trying to take his life. But joyful moments came when Saul was killed in battle and David occupied the throne as Israel's king. He went through weeping nights after his adultery with Bathsheba. Tried to hide it, but eventually a joyful morning came when he confessed his sins and says, create in me. A clean heart and renew in me. Oh, Lord, gee, somebody read that, didn't you? He went through weeping nights. David experiencing this when his own son, Absalom, chased him from his throne. Took his stuff. Hunted him down like a dog to kill him. That was a weeping night. But he had joy when he returned back as king over Jerusalem. And he was able to write this psalms of thanksgiving and celebration of God's deliverance. I'm not quite sure what experience in David's life caused him to write this psalm. 
But I just know he had a reason to praise God. David had endured some nights of weeping because God had brought him out and he was able to praise God for the joyful moment. And then David says, look in verse one. He exalts the Lord for lifting him up and not allowing his enemies to gloat over him. Verse two. David acknowledges that God heard his cry and healed him from his sickness. Uh, that, that's, some, that's some encouragement for us. God heard you. He hears you. Uh, just cry. See, some of you ain't cried out. Some of you still comfortable in your pain. Some of you still comfortable where you are. Some of you still comfortable in your weeping of your nights. So you, you can get comfortable. Did you know you can get comfortable with crazy? Y- y- y'all did know that, don't you? Crazy becomes normal. Did you know that? You can get comfortable in pain. You can get comfortable with crazy. You can get comfortable with stupid people. You can get comfortable with just going with the flow. You can get comfortable with abuse. You can get comfortable with stuff you know that is wrong. But if you don't say nothing, you can get comfortable complacent apathetic I just don't care I ain't even gonna try despondent depression and so on and so on well well, well, well. David knew that it was God who had spared his life in verse 3 David then encourages other saints to praise God by verse 4 because he knew that he wasn't the only one that God has blessed David could really praise God for knowing that his anger oh it it lasts a moment amen how how many of you know that it lasts a moment How, how many of us had some moments in our lives oh it doesn't it lasts whoo it seemed like time keep don't even move. As long as you watching that clock, it don't move. It's still the same minute. <clears throat> David gives us something to shout about. But joy. But before we get our shout on, let's try and understand the weeping nights and joyful morning by some of the reasons that he gives for praising God. First reason that David gives is because God lifted him out of the depths. The phrase lifted me up signifies one drawn from a well. This may have been physically an illness, but also it could be spiritually or emotionally. God lifted me up, out of my loneliness, depression, despair, discouragement, hopelessness, all of the trials that we face. It it, it was during the nighttime. What was it, Ray Charles? Nighttime was the right time. Because that's when God will show his face. That's when he shows himself the most. That's when God's brilliance and his light manifests itself in our darkest of situations. He comes at night when it's weeping. He comes at night when it's shouting and crying out. And God lifts us, he says. That's God's presence lifting us. (coughs) Secondly, God didn't allow his enemies to gloat over him. God gave David victories when the odds 
was stacked against him. He realized that it was God who allowed him to have the victories. See, sometimes you need to reflect back and quit thinking it was you. Oh, it's because I'm good at finances. It's because I'm good. No, it's because God is good. It's because God brought your raggedy butt to where you needed to be. It wasn't because you so-and-so and this and that, and it ain't because this black belt, or it ain't because you got this, or it ain't because you this smart. It's because God. So David didn't take credit for his success, but he gave credit to God. If you made it to December, you need to give him some praise. Because some folk, auntie, she didn't make it out of December. Uh, this is the month daddy didn't make it out of December. It's a whole bunch of folk didn't make it past December. But God brought you. Oh, you thought because you're young, it's some 17-year-olds that's gone. It's some 13 year olds that's gone. It's some four year olds that left. It's some babies that left, but God. The third, third, third thing I see, I see God healed. Often when trouble arises, it is referred as to as an affliction. So being released from that is referred to as a healing. He is the God who can restore, David says, and heal. He is the God who meets us at the deepest point of our need and heals. Oh, Jehovah Rapha. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. God heals us not only of physical healing, but our sinful depravity. Mm, mm, mm which can be greater than any sickness. See, when you start getting real with yourself, so that's why I don't like fake folk. Well, Can't stand fake folk. You know, who are you trying to impress? One, let me get tell you something. Don't nobody care. We got our own, I mean, our own stuff. That we going through. Well, <laughs> Don't nobody care about your feet. Well, Woo. <laughs> pray for the pastor. Pray for the pastor. <laughs> but I'm serious. Don't nobody care. <sighs> God, through David. It's saying, my favor that I'm going to give to you in the middle of your weeping night is not just going to be for one day. It's, it's not going to be for a week, but it's going to be forever. Forever, ever? Ever, ever? Ever. Amen. And David started getting so happy. He says joy will last a lifetime. So the lessons that I learned from this passage is I need to remind myself and others what God has done. Some, sometimes you, you just need to remind yourself. I, I know it's bad. I, I know we be tripping sometimes. I, I know the pain get to us sometimes. Sometimes the medication will make you, woo, woo, woo. It make you start tripping and your emotions start flowing. But sometimes you just need to remind yourself how good God has been. And not only that he's been good, I, I need to tell somebody. I can't keep it to myself. And then I need to regularly express praise to God. 
See, you sometimes you just need to let the air out. Sometimes you just need to stretch and just walk it out and just praise it out. You've been bottled up. You've been trying to be contained. You've been trying to keep it all together. Sometimes you just need to say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, he's been good. Y'all don't feel me. See, we were created to worship and praise the master. And if you, if you keep that stuff bottled up on the inside, Oh, you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to have a stroke. You're going to have a heart attack. You're going to have high blood pressure. Your head going to get so big that you're just going to fall over because you can't walk with a big old head. Amen. And then we need to remember what a good, compassionate God that we serve. I need to remember that when I am in a pit that God didn't put me there. And he's ready to lift me out. David praised God for delivering him out of all his troubles and his pain and encourages us in this psalm to hold on and hold out because although weeping is going on right now, joy will come in the morning. What are we waiting for? I wish some folk get up and start praising him right now. I wish some folk would sing... I wish some folk would come with some praise and, uh, because God will turn the winter nights into summer days. Singing. He will turn that grief into gladness and our wilderness into a paradise. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. For whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, weeping may endure for the night but joy I'll get my gain after the loss strength will come after my weakness there's a crown after my cross because in the morning joy oh yeah that ain't gonna be the song the song is for a joy that lasts because I was listening to it as I was writing this. And I remember them singing this and it says early in the morning before the break of day I asked the Lord to make me whole. He holds me and the Lord keeps me. Oh joy joy in my soul. Joy Joy, God's joy, joy, down in my sweet, beautiful, soul saving joy. Oh, joy. What? Joy, joy. God's great joy, joy, joy. What? That's what you got. You got God's joy. You don't have the world's happiness. You, you got God's joy. You better claim it this morning. You better walk in that joy. You better let joy cover you all the days of your life. Sweet! All right, all right, all right. Oh, y'all did it there. Since y'all already stand. The doors of the church are open. The invitation to Christian discipleship. Oh, quit weeping. Come to God's joy. God's joy through Jesus the Christ. Let him give you his joy. Let him walk with you. Won't you come? And if you need a church home, here it is right here. 
This the, is the best home. We got the best people. Amen. I need all my saints. I need you to pray. And let God's comfort and joy take hold of this family. Y'all keep praising. Y'all keep praising him. You may be seated.
Amen. Before we get to the tithes and our offering, I'm trying to help you. You've been doing good, St. Paul. Y'all been doing good. You've been allowing the spirit to come and move in this place. Amen. But I don't know what they done told you before about worship. I don't know how you think and me supposed to be. But looky here. Life is real. I ain't got time to be playing church because I know when I leave, I got to go face some stuff. Amen? And it be every single day. And it'll wear you down. I'm telling you, it will wear you down. I thought I was strong, but after a while, <laughs> it'll knock out the best person. Amen? And you just get tired. So that's why my little pre-brain done figured out if I can just get to Jesus, if I can just if I can just let go and say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for not listening. Forgive me for not walking in total obedience. Forgive me for not trusting you when you done proved yourself time and time again. I got mad at everybody else. I said, no, Lord, it's, it's me. Because if you make me a clean heart, and give me an upright understanding. If you give me the ability to have joy and praise you in the midst of my enemies. Do you know how much power that is? Do you know how much victorious you'll be? So that's why I want our church to worship like that. To trust them like that to move through the mess like that amen and to do it time and time again is to practice the presence of God every day until it becomes subconscious till you don't have to think about it you just do it all the time because that is the only way you're going to make it through now, I can be wrong. So if I'm wrong, you do you. I know what I'm going to do. Amen. As for me, I ain't say that. Because I ain't got control of my house. Amen. I just know as for me, I will serve the Lord. God bless you. God smiled upon you. Ah, I feel much better now. Amen. What we doing? We done already did it.
Father, thank you for your blessing. Thank you, Lord, for your joy. Cover us with that joy, Lord. Help us to realize that we have been covered by your joy since we came to Christ. Activate our faith. Cause us to continually trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen.